Hey, what's going on guys? Mike Wilson here. Uh, so we put a filler out inside of the Facebook group and uh, what we got back is people wanted to hear about um, nurturing clients. So today we're going to go through that, the different types of nurturing, the way, why nurturing is important, um, and then also some um, some nurturing ideas that may not be um, uh, the most popular ones, but I think that are super valuable if you're a company that has a team. So my goal here is to try to keep this video under 20 minutes. I want this to be a pretty quick training for you guys so that you can uh, grasp the information and figure out how you can implement it into your business in order to make sure that you operate better. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into it. If you, uh, some of you have probably talked to me before, if you've met me in person or something like that, but if you don't know, my name is Michael Wilson. I'm the uh, founder and CEO here at Processology. Um, I have about 16 years experience with uh, businesses and helping uh, and starting businesses as well as helping businesses um, untangle their processes and systems and things like that. So um, that's enough about me though. Let's go ahead and jump into the training. So today we're going to talk about what is nurturing, why should you be doing it, um, is automation required to do it, and then the different types of nurturing, like general nurturing, uh, re-engagement nurturing, segment nurturing, activity-based nurturing. And then, like I said, we're going to jump into some of those uh, um, less common use cases, but that I personally think are extremely powerful for any company that has employees or partners, and that's going to be your employee nurturing and your partner nurturing. So what is nurturing? So nurturing is basically how you stay in touch with your clients, your contacts, your partners, your employees, whoever it is. Um, it's how you stay front and center. It's how you continue to uh, have those touches with them to build trust um, and to um, let them know about new events, new activities, new things, news in the company, different things like that. It's just how you stay front and center. There's so much noise out here in the world that people will lose track of you because you start to fade away um, the more time that you um, you leave between the time that you've contacted them last or have talked to them or things like that. So nurturing is super important um, if you want to keep a long lasting relationship with your clients. The thing I want to say is that nurturing doesn't need to be sales. It can have, it can have sales and can have an aspect of sales um, within it. Um, and I, I definitely recommend if you're nurturing to clients to have some type of call to action in most of your nurturing campaigns. But however, um, this could just be sing out use for information because you might just want to build trust. You don't want to ask for the sell yet. You want to build that relationship. So maybe you're just sending out useful tips, useful info, different things like that. Um, this video could be considered a, a, um, a way of nurturing. My goal is to help my clients think about things like nurturing and untangle and things like that. Um, the other thing is, uh, nurturing um, can be done in many different ways. So it can be done, like I said, through videos like I'm doing now. It can be done through email, which is probably the most popular. Also uh, text message, SMS, um, as well as phone calls and things like social media. So all those are ways to nurture your clients um, and nurture your contacts. So I definitely think you can get real creative on how you do that. If you're constantly nurturing through one uh, medium, like email, for example, that might, you know, people might notice that and that might get a little annoying sometimes. So if you diversify the way that you're nurturing your clients, that will uh, definitely give a more pleasant uh, user experience. Um, so why should you be doing this? Again, I just explained that, that you should be doing this to, in order to keep con uh, in contact with your clients, to build trust and to keep that relationship flowing. The more your clients see, the more they hear from you, the more they see your expertise, um, it is going to build trust. The whole goal is to show, hey, I'm an expert in my field or I'm great at what I do. Um, we have a great product, whatever it is, right? Don't talk about you, but I mean, just you can show the benefits of that through long term, through, uh, long term right? You may send out a testimonial. You may send out a blog post. You may send out use cases, different things like that in order to uh, nurture your clients. Now, um, at the bottom here, you can see I say not ready, put them in the oven. Uh, to bake. So basically, they're not ready to take whatever choice you've made, or maybe they've already taken the choice and you want to pitch another product or service to them. Um, you may need to let them bake a little bit before you um, pull them out of the oven and try to sell to them and things like that. So just keep that in mind. Uh, the next thing I wanted to bring up was automation. So um, automation is a powerful tool to help you nurture your clients. Um, so you don't have to use automation for nurturing, right? You could pick up the phone yourself and call a client. You could send a one-off email to a client. You can go and post on social media as, as a one-off post. Obviously, that takes a lot of time and it's a lot of manpower. So you can use something like automation to set up email campaigns, to set up SMS campaigns, to automate your social media post, right? Once you set this stuff up and press play, it just goes and works. Um, it's, a, it's a great way to increase efficiency when it comes to nurturing, no matter who you're nurturing, clients, employees, or partners. 
um, you can use it. The one thing that I will say, though, is that the, the dangerous side of automation is that if you don't have um, a solid uh, strategy for how you're going to automate that, um, it can backfire, right? If you're automating the wrong messages or people are getting offended by the things you're saying, and now that's on automation going to everyone automatically, um, that can be something that uh, can get a little scary, as well as uh, you have to still keep tabs on your automation to make sure things are working and getting client feedback and reading that information. Don't just turn it on and forget about it. It, uh, because you may be getting messages and things like that that you're not engaging with. So if it's done right, it is an extremely powerful tool to increase efficiency and effectiveness. So let's talk about the different types of uh, nurturing. So this is the exciting part because a lot of people think about nurturing as just sending out emails. Um, and there's so many things that you can do with nurturing. It's so powerful. If you have the right systems and tools in place, you can do some amazing things uh, with your nurturing campaigns. So general nurturing, general nurturing is going to be like, for example, let's say short term nurturing. Um, this is based off an action or a certain target. Um, so like, let's say, for example, um, somebody just opted into a discovery call with you or they just opted into a product demo or something like that. A short term nurture is going to be really good because it's kind of a more take action now. Hey, these are some talking points now. It's trying to get somebody to take a short term action, right? We want them to make an action within the next week, two weeks. Uh, but obviously you can't just email and text people every day forever because that's going to get extremely, extremely, extremely annoying. So that's where you have a short term nurture where you can kind of hit them a little harder um, with your communications. But then as you notice, okay, they're not taking action. They're not really interested in moving forward with this. You start to back off a little bit and maybe transfer them to more of a long-term nurturing campaign. Long-term nurturing campaign is going to help you build long-term consistency and awareness with your clients. So this might be your newsletter that goes out. This may be company news. This may be uh, advice. And so I would say for a long-term nurture, maybe send an email, depending on your clientele. Some people can get away with once a week. Some people can be uh, twice a month and some people can be once a month and some people are maybe quarterly. It just really depends on the clientele and who you're going after and what the goal is for your particular nurturing campaign. But just remember, long-term nurturing is going to be for immediate action. You're trying to get them to push a button on, on a product. So for example, a great one for that is thinking about like a, a shopping cart um, um, abandoning, right? So if somebody abandons a shopping cart, for example, you want to send them messages that say, hey, you didn't, you didn't finish your purchase. Click here to complete your purchase. That's going to be more of a short-term nurturing where right? you're trying to get them to take an immediate action. Long-term nurturing is just a way that you're keeping in touch with them over a long-term period of time. Um, me personally, I think for short term, I would give it a week to two weeks of type of, uh, of nurturing in there through email, social media, and um, uh, SMS messages, uh, phone calls, things like that. Long-term nurturing, I would say maybe once every two weeks or once a month is pretty good. And I would make sure that I have, if you're using automation, I would build that out to where it is, um, let's say six months um, to a year long. The other cool thing about these is that they're, you want to set these up very strategically. The goal is to take a person from where they are to where you want them to go, right? Where they want to go. Um, so your, your content, your targeting, your messaging and things like that within these nurturing campaigns need to be doing that. Um, so when you build a long-term nurture campaign, it may be starting everyone off at the same point. Let's say that you know all of your clients come in with, um, and let's say that they have fear, right? They're, they're afraid to take risk. And you know that your ideal customer is afraid to take risk. Start your nurturing campaign. What, what's going to help them immediately as far as taking risk? Um, and then slowly guide them to your product or your service. Um, but make sure that you uh, do it strategically. So for example, think about their mental buying process. Where do they start off? Where are they today, right? They may not be willing to take action, but they need help. They need information. So start them there and slowly do your nurturing. Show them why you're an expert in your field and why your product is going to help them solve their problem. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is re-engagement nurturing. So re-engagement nurturing is pretty awesome. Um, again, this could be um, an abandoned cart type of thing, but typically this is going to be something where um, you have you've lost contact with a con with, with uh, one of your contacts, one of your clients. Maybe it's been three months, maybe it's been two months uh, since the last time they've had any activity with your business, and you have a campaign set up to where it is very deliberate to get them to take some kind of action to show that they still have some kind of interest. In in your business. Um, so this could be, you know, you could have a campaign that says um, if a client hasn't had any activity, they haven't visited our website, they haven't engaged on social media, they haven't had a phone call, they haven't had anything within the last 90 days, then we want to send them, let's just say 25% off to get them to take action. Or we want to um, offer them a free training that we have. Um, whatever that is, 
whatever it is that you're offering, it does not matter. The goal is that you're trying to re-engage them. So it needs to be juicy. It needs to be something that they are going to want to take. So if you know, if you're targeting the right people, you know your client's problem, then uh, figure out something that maybe you wouldn't offer somebody at first, but in order to keep it going, that you would. That could be a very powerful um, blog post. That can be whatever. That can be a free call. It can be so many different things. The goal is to attempt to start a conversation or pick up a conversation where it left off, right? So another great one and one that we typically use here at Processology um, is that if a client uh, doesn't go forward with the project with us, then we may say, okay, no problem. But then they go into a re-engagement campaign that maybe six months later, we might have automation that'll email them and say something like, hey, about six months ago, we had a project that we were looking at. It looks like it wasn't the right time. But um, I was wondering if now is a better time for you. Would you like to pick the conversation back up? So stuff like that will definitely help you get that. And if you're using automation, the beautiful thing is that you don't even really have to think about this. You set it and it goes, right? You add a tag or, or put them in a campaign or whatever it is, and the thing just works. And that's the beautiful um, thing about um, automation. So now let's talk about uh, segmenting. Uh, so seg uh, segmenting your clients. So segment nurturing is going to be more um, based off of a prime example. Um, and I'll use us as an example because I think it's the easiest way to explain it, but you can apply this to pretty much any business. If you know your client's problem, right? Let's say, for example, um, you've asked a question on a phone call or they filled out a form or they um, recently viewed a certain blog post or something like that. Um, it gives you an idea of what they're interested in. So if you have some type of nurturing campaign that is based off of the client's interest or the client's uh, pain point or the client's desire, whatever that is, you can have basically different roads that these clients can go down based on their need. So a uh, prime example is like we have um, um, where well, we ask questions like, what's your challenges, right? So you might say your challenge is attracting clients. So we don't want to send you information on how to improve employee, um, report, uh, employee culture in the company if your challenge is sales, right? Like you're not, you don't care about that right now. You care about sales. So the content that we need to send you needs to relate to what you're interested in. So send people down the right path. So this is a great way to segment your contacts and give them only the information they need at that moment. That's going to be super powerful because if you're sending them the wrong stuff. They're going to go and look for the information they need somewhere else. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, drop some comments on any of these, any questions you have, anything below. I would love to hear your, your feedback and um, the way that you, uh, you're you currently using nurturing in your business. So activity-based nurturing is going to be based on activity. Um, prime example, let's say that uh, you have a website with, I'm going to use a service-based business for this. So let's say that you have a website um, and you have a contact that you're tracking. You have a tracking code on your site and a contact goes to your services page. You can have automation say, oh, this person went to our services page. Let's send them an email saying something like, hey, we noticed you visited our service page recently. Um, is there anything I can help you with? You'd like to set up a call to learn more about our services. Something like that, right? If you're, let's say, a cake company, you bake cakes, um, activity-based uh, um, uh, nurturing can be based off somebody looking at your cake gallery. Hey, I noticed that you were looking at birthday cakes. Are you interested in um, getting a quote? It can be used in so many different ways. I, if you're a law firm, I noticed that you were checking out criminal law, or I noticed that you were checking out uh, our diverse uh, our divorce section, whatever that is, and you can um, target that messaging based on that activity. So that way you're giving people only what they need and what they're interested in at the moment, which is gonna make converting them extremely powerful. Now this can also work for things that are not just sales. This can work um, based off of somebody taking an action. Maybe you were waiting on an application to be submitted. Maybe you were waiting on a document. Maybe you were waiting on whatever it is. This nurturing can be based on that. Like, hey, we haven't received any, um, or lack of activity can be based on like, hey, we haven't received your application. Here's the link to complete that or we only received a partial application. Here's a link to complete part two. So whatever that is, you can use this type of nurturing in order to push that forward. Now let's talk a little bit about internal nurturing. So this is something like if you have employees or you have partners that you work with, um, I think using nurturing internally is a really great way um, to help push the business forward and create some efficiency within the company. So things like uh, when I talk about employee nurturing, it's going to be culture building. This can be, um, let's say you have a message that goes out quarterly to your team that says, hey, uh, how's the company been going so far? Take our survey. Um, maybe you have a, a message going out to build morale where um, every Monday you have an inspira uh, inspirational message go out to your team. 
Um, and all the stuff can be automated and pre-set up for your company. Um, it may be something where um, you have a new employee that comes on board and you want to be checking on them through uh, on their experience with the company. Let's say for the first four or five months that they're on board, you want to get the experience. You want to learn, hey, how was your onboarding experience? How was the training? Do you felt like we've been here? Do you feel like we've listened to your concerns? Do you feel comfortable here? What would you change? Like this stuff will help you grow your company. This stuff helps push things forward. Same thing with partners. Is there any way that we can improve our partner relationship? Hey, tell us about your experience with us as a partner. You know, maybe your partners don't like your company. Maybe they love your company. But if you don't nurture and ask these questions, you'll never know. Maybe it's automatically sending company news to partners and employees and things like that. So you can use these nurturing campaigns for so many different uh, things within your company um, that it, it's 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 endless. It's just all about figuring out what's the mission. And in any of this, guys, that's what I would stress to you. Determine what the overall mission is for each individual process, each individual nurturing campaign. And I know that sounds like a lot of work, but I promise you, if you do it, you will feel so much better about your business because your plan is strategic. You can't hit a target if you don't know the target, right? You have to, you have to know the target. You have to know where you are and where you're trying to go in order for you to uh, create a, a experience, a journey, a process, systems in order to accomplish that particular mission. So if I can leave you with anything, it's going to be have a clearly defined mission um, and make sure that you have your processes designed in a way that are to accomplish that mission, right? What's your strategy? What's your process? What systems are used? What people are involved? And how do they play a part in the overall process? And the thing that you really want to think about is everyone's involved. Even your client plays a part in your process. If they don't take action, then the process doesn't work, right? What it was designed to do will not work. So the whole goal is to complete that process. Um, so that's basically it on the whole nurturing thing. I hope you guys enjoyed that training. Um, I love doing these things um, because I feel like it's a lot of things that conversations that don't get said. Processes and systems are not necessarily a sexy topic, um, but they're so important in your business. And if you're not strategically planning these out, you're going to start to notice that things are going to get tangled, right? Things are going to start falling apart. And you're going to start seeing symptoms like loss in sales, loss of employees, um, bad reviews on, on, on um, online and different things like that. Or you're losing partnerships because things aren't working. Uh, maybe you're losing investors because, you know, you're not hitting your goals. All these things are symptoms of a larger problem. Um, and the goal of uh, process design and process strategy and operation, all this stuff is really to dig in and figure out what's happening in your business or or what could be happening in your business if you take the right steps and do it strategically. So anyway, guys, I hope you love the training. If you did like it, please drop some comments below. Let me know that you liked it. And that's going to inspire me to keep doing these trainings on different subjects. Um, I will probably do another video uh, pretty soon here. So also let me know um, in the comments what's, uh, what video you would like to hear. Um, if this inspired you to change anything in your in your current process, your current nurturing campaign, um, your structure. And as always, if you need help doing this, if you need help with strategy, reach out to us at processology.net forward slash discovery, and you can request a discovery call there. We would love to work with you, hear about your business and the things that you want to do. Always, our goal is to help you untangle your business so that you can operate better.